Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum. I wanted to thank the Constellation Alumni Association and my batchmate, Dr. Azka, for inviting me here to speak to you all today. Uh, my name is Abdullah Paul. I am a graduate of CMH Lahore from the batch of 2016. I'm currently a student at the UCLA School of Dentistry. Uh, I'll be graduating this summer and, and attending a specialty program in orthodontics at uh, Georgia. So I'm here to speak to you a little bit about the advanced dining programs in the US and the application process. Uh, so a few things to consider before you apply that it is a time commitment. Uh, it takes a lot of time to build your CV. It takes time to uh, apply. Uh, and then the uh, time is usually about two years of dental school that you have to go through. And uh, depending on which specialty you want to do, anywhere between one to four years uh, for that as well. Uh, it is an expensive process. Uh, there is a cost for taking any exam. Uh, the application is expensive uh, and schools are expensive as well. Uh, but if you think of it as an investment, and you get through the process, uh, the returns will be there. Uh, and if you are planning on applying to the US, it's never too early to start. Start building your CV right now. Uh, so some of the benefits of applying to the US, it is considered one of the best jobs in the US. Uh, it challenges you. Uh, it isn't too stressful. There's always opportunities to advance throughout your career. Uh, it pays well, and uh, there is a satisfying work-life balance that you have as well. Uh, you have the opportunity to own your own business early in your career as well, uh, and you can implement technology and your own philosophy into your own practice as well. Uh, there are opportunities to continue learning. Uh, there are always different hands-on courses, uh, certifications that are offered after graduation. Uh, and there's always new technology that's coming out that you can incorporate into your practice. Uh, there are a variety of career options that you can choose as well. Uh, you can decide to go into academics and research. Uh, you can go into private practice as a general dentist, or you can go into specialty uh, program. And uh, you, the, the best thing about dentistry is that you have a flexible lifestyle as well. I, you can work nine to five, or you can go into more hospital or dentistry emergency and have longer work hours as well, if you'd like. So you graduated from your dental school in Pakistan and uh, you, you wanna start applying. So what's next? Uh, you make a dent pin at the ADA website. The dent pin is an ID number for professionals and students uh, involved in the US dental, uh, US dental education system. Uh, connects you uh, to them and allows you to send your standardized testing and your transcripts. Uh, you will make an ECE report. Uh, so you'll get your transcripts verified. You'll send them your degree and it'll, they will convert your transcripts into a GPA. Uh, and schools will use this to evaluate you during the application process. Uh, then you'll register for the National Board Dental Exam. Uh, I'll go to more into detail with that a little bit later. Uh, and then you can register for the TOEFL, which is an English la uh, language test. Uh, once you've done all that, you have all your requirements complete. You can uh, apply through the, you can apply to dental schools through the ADA CAPID uh, application. Uh, once your application is processed, you'll be invited for an interview at dental schools. Uh, so the NBDE, uh, it's a little bit different now than when I took it. Uh, it used to be two parts, the NBDE part one and part two. Uh, since then, it's been integrated into one part. It's now the Integrated National Board Mental Exam, the INBD. Uh, the format of it, there are 500 multiple choice questions. It's uh, over one and a half days. Uh, so the grading system is a pass-fail. Uh, you don't receive a score if you pass. Uh, if you fail, they'll give you a score for remediation purposes. It is a long exam. It requires a lot of practice, a lot of studying, and a strong understanding of the material. Uh, and you have to travel to the US to take this exam. Uh, so 40% of the exam is uh, case-based questions, uh, what's shown over here. Uh, it'll have a case presented to you and you have to draw information from that and answer uh, multiple choice questions. 
the other 60% are standalone items. Uh, it'll be an MCQ form. Uh, some of the study materials are listed uh, right here. The one that I used was the dental decks and I use uh, first aid as a supplemental uh, study aid. A lot of my uh, classmates use the Dental Mastery app uh, just on your phone. You can study wherever you go. Uh, if you fail the exam, you have to wait uh, 90 days to take the exam again. Uh, you, can, you have five attempts. Uh, after five attempts, if you uh, fail five times, you have to wait one year before you can take the exam again. Uh, average prep time for most students is between six to 12 months. Again, it depends how much time in the day you devote to studying. Uh, another exam that you have to take is the TOEFL, the uh, test of English as a foreign language. Uh, it is a three hour exam uh, divided into four parts. Uh, each part is worth about 30 points. A good score, generally most schools want around 100. Uh, there are a lot of good resources online. Uh, I'd say the best way to practice for this is to just take a lot of practice tests, uh, practice speaking, um, and uh, just go through this, the study resources listed. Uh, this, these scores are valid for two years and you can take it from anywhere in the world. Uh, during the pandemic, they started uh, home-based tests where you can just take it at your, on your computer at home. Uh, once you're done with your exams, uh, it's time to apply. Uh, you apply through the uh, CAPID, which is the centralized application for advanced placement for uh, international dentists. Uh, most schools participate in this uh, centralized application process. However, some schools have their own application process, which require you to go to the website and uh, apply separately. Uh, so uh, these are generally open from March to February every year, but each uh, school will have its own deadline. So it's important to uh, keep an eye on those. Uh, the required documents are listed uh, over here. I uh, just wanted to go over the letters of evaluation uh, have to be from dentists that you know. Uh, generally, one will be from the dean, one will be from uh, a US-based dentist, and one will be any other uh, dentist that you know. Uh, it's critical to get a good letter uh, from someone that knows you well uh, personally. Uh, it really helps in the admissions process. Uh, and uh, there'll be a section for you to enter any additional test scores and degrees that you have as well. Uh, personal statement, uh, I'll go into more detail later. Uh, so each program will also have its own set of questions. Uh, it's important to do your research on these programs and uh, because they will ask you questions such as, uh, why did you choose to apply to this school or why are you a good fit for our school? And sometimes they'll ask you ethical questions as well. Uh, so I got a lot of questions about the personal statement all the time. Uh, it's a hard question to answer because there's no right or wrong way to write your personal statement. Uh, this is a chance for you to write to tell your own story to the uh, admissions committee. It's very open ended, uh, but it should be a very interesting read. Uh, it's a chance to speak more openly to the admissions committee and for them to get you get to know you more uh, beyond your CV as well. Uh, it's good to tell stories about your experience uh, and how that contributed to your personal uh sorry, your professional growth as well. And then it's important to have a lot of people read this as well. Uh, so you make sure that there's no grammatical errors in uh, your personal statement. Uh, so once you complete your application and you submit it to schools, uh, they'll invite you for an interview. Uh, the interview is generally divided into two parts, the interview and the bench test. Uh, currently, because of the pandemic, a lot of schools have discontinued the bench test and are doing their interviews over Zoom. Sorry. Um, so uh, usually the schools will have an orientation or a social event. Uh, it's a good chance to meet other candidates and to ask questions to uh, uh, current students about the program as well. It's a good chance to network and meet people as well. Uh, during your interview, they'll ask you a variety of questions. 
regarding your CV, uh, there'll be a lot of questions like, tell me about yourself or tell me about your experience in uh, whatever's written on your CV. Uh, why, why did you choose to apply to this school? Uh, and then uh, at the end of your interview, they'll have uh, some time for you to ask them questions as well and support to ask them good questions. Uh, the bench test is different for each school. Uh, most schools will generally have a mannequin based test where they'll require you to do uh, direct restorations and crown preps as well. So uh, once you finish up school in the US, which is generally a two year program, uh, there's a list of specialty programs you can go just listed right here. Um, they're very competitive to get into, but uh, uh, if you continue to work on your CV through school, show leadership, um, you have a good chance of getting into a specialty program. Uh, or if you decide you can go right into general practice, there are a lot of jobs in the US as well. It's one of the fastest growing jobs in the US. Uh, there's a chance for you to own your own practice as well. Uh, you can run your own business. Uh, and if you decide you can go into academics and research as well. Uh, with some experience. Uh, so some advice I would have, uh, some advice I'd give myself if I could talk to myself of six years ago is to maximize your US based uh, experience. Uh, your US uh, experience is regarded more highly uh, than experience abroad. Uh, you should uh, show a lot of leadership as well. They want to see you, uh, how well you communicate and lead others, uh, and your CV should show it. Uh, it's important to get involved in organized dentistry, uh, and it's important to network. It really matters who you know. Uh, I worked with a dentist that was uh, also a faculty member at my school. He wrote me a great letter, uh, and I was able to get an interview at, at the school. Um, and also schools love to see your interests and uh, passions outside of academics um, to get to know you on a little bit more of a personal level. And it's important to self, uh, so, sorry, set yourself apart. Uh, everyone has their basic requirements. Everybody has uh, good grades, um, but what sets you apart? A common question I used to get during interviews is um, we have 50 other candidates sitting outside, why should we choose you? Uh, and really there's, there should be something that sets you apart from everybody else. Uh, so here are some references to look at. Uh, I just wanna point out the DES project. Um, it's a great resource if, if you're getting started. Uh, there's a lot of information there about uh, the whole application process, uh, the exams, anything you need to know, it's right there. Uh, thank you for letting me speak to you. Uh, I love answering good questions. Uh, there are unlimited resources on the internet uh, to research uh, the, the process of applying to the US. But if there's something you can't find the answer to, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you again.